Hey church family, I hope that you are all doing well. Uh, I miss seeing all of you and uh, I just trust that you are continuing to follow the Lord faithfully during this time. Uh, I promised you last week that I would have an update for you on uh, when we are going to uh, regather as a church, as a church family. And so uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, we will have uh, an opportunity for you to gather with uh, your church family next Sunday, June 14th. Uh, if you choose to choose to do that and choose to participate in that way. Uh, now, I'm not going to give uh, any details today, uh, but be looking out for uh, another uh, update at the beginning of next week, um, either Monday or Tuesday, Lord willing. Uh, I'll have um, uh, another video, um, some more information that I'll be getting out uh, to all of you regarding specifics uh, for what uh, our, our worship service will uh, look like on June 14th. But I at least wanted to let you know that if you if you um, want to gather uh, with church family uh, next Sunday, June 14th, you will have an opportunity to opportunity, uh, excuse me, to uh, to do that. Uh, but look out next week, uh, beginning of next week, for some more information and more details regarding that time. Uh, um, as as we uh, get prepared for uh, tomorrow and uh, preaching of the word, one I just want to I just want to encourage you and, and really plead with you, um, uh, just um, out of out of love and, and desire for you to continue growing in your faith and and what is what is do what is good for you um, uh, spiritually. Um, don't don't uh, don't get distracted from uh, the preaching of the word during this time. Uh, I know uh, watching it on a, on a phone or a computer or a TV, um, if you're used to being in a worship service and seeing uh, being a part of in-person worship gathering, it, it, it can't take the place. Um, it, I know it's not the same, but listen, it's so important that we continue uh, sitting under the preaching of God's Word. Um, God has designed us uh, to grow spiritually um, through certain avenues um, of growth, and one of those avenues that He's given us is the preaching of the Word. So I just want to um, encourage you and challenge you. Make sure you're setting aside time. Um, if you've missed, uh, missed a, a, a sermon or a Sunday um, uh, in the past few weeks we've got technology you can go back and and look at that uh, watch that just make sure that you're you're feeding your soul the Word of God in preparation for uh, for tomorrow's sermon uh, we'll, we will be back in first Thessalonians and so I would encourage you just to prepare for that time to uh, to read through all the first Thess Thessalonians um, and uh, and then really specifically if you could um, take a take a few minutes and focus on uh, chapter 2 verse 17 through through chapter 3 verse 13 we're not going to study all of those verses um, uh, in the in the preaching time tomorrow uh, we'll look at a few of those uh, but that's the next section uh, of first Thessalonians and so it'll help you greatly if you go ahead and maybe read through those verses two two or three times uh, before tomorrow's uh, before you watch tomorrow's message that's again that's chapter 2 verse 17 through chapter 3, verse uh, verse 13. And so, um, take, take us some time, uh, uh, read that, and it'll, it'll help you be just ready to go uh, for the time of preaching tomorrow. The last thing that I want to uh, share with you is, uh, is just, a, just a word of, of encouragement and challenge uh, for us as Christians. Uh, I don't have to tell you, we are we are living in um, in some interesting times. I tell you, the past few months have um, have just uh, uh, sometimes I don't even have words, <laughs> kind of like right now, just to just to describe what what's going on in our in our country and um, and, uh, and how it affects people in different ways. Um, my heart breaks for the brokenness in our world, and we see it on so many different levels. Um, and, uh, and, and again, I, you, you see it, you, you know, what's happening It's you, you watch the news and, and, uh, you talk to people and, and so what I really, what I, what I want to do is just, um, 
uh, share. I want to share a passage of scripture with you, and I'm not really going to say much about it. I just want to read it and let you meditate on it. Uh, but I was I was having a conversation with uh, a sister in Christ yesterday, and uh, she was she was talking about um, how we we don't want to we don't ever want to miss what God is doing in in a, in a moment or in a, in a season of life, and. Uh, I had had been having similar similar thoughts as well for my own life. God, don't let me don't let me miss out on what you're you're trying to do or you're trying to teach me during this this season of life. Um, but we we had a good good conversation about that. I think she was right. I think she was right that we we in the even in the midst of turmoil, God is God is at work, um, even when it doesn't seem like it. And so we want to say, God, what are what are you doing, and how do you want what do you want to teach me, and and how do you want to use me during this time? There's so many different ways we could answer that. Um, some general ways that He would use all of us as Christians, and then specific ways that He would use us as individuals in our unique settings and and um, and uh, and and gifts and abilities and, and where He's placed us in life. But but if I can maybe just give one answer to that, um, in the midst of of the the divisions that we see in uh, in our country, in the midst of uh, injustices, in the midst of um, lawless activity, uh, in the midst of of really just just to put it bluntly, wickedness on so many different levels. Uh, one of the things that maybe God is doing is giving us as Christians just a very very unique opportunity to stand out as followers of Jesus. Uh, a unique opportunity to, to live differently than the society around us. Um, sometimes we don't like to look different. We like to blend in with whatever, uh, whatever group we kind of tend to associate with, whether that's um, a group in a geographic location or a group in a political uh, uh, type um, setting, or, or or however we you know try to identify ourselves in in worldly terms, God has called us out of that. He He has called us to identify uh, with with Himself, to identify with His kingdom, with the gospel, with the people of God, which means we we make decisions. Um, based off of a different set of criteria than the world around us. And, uh, and, and two things happen when we do that. Um, well, one, one thing and then two things that come from that. One, the thing that happens is we look different. We stand out. When we, when we live according to God's word, when we live centered on the gospel, uh, when we live as citizens of the kingdom of God in in this world, in, in our country, in our state, in our community, we're going to stand out. And when that happens, two, two things will result. Uh, number one, number one, um, some people are not going to like it. And we just have to be okay with that. Uh, the world does not always like it when, um, when Christians live as Christians. And Jesus told us that would happen. He said, they, they hated me. They're going to hate you. They, they uh, persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. Uh, they killed me. Why would you expect any different? Um, and so we don't run from that, um, uh, and and we we know that's just a part of God's will, and it's okay. We have a we have a home waiting for us uh, in heaven, and so we don't we don't run from that. We just have to know and be aware that when we when we look different than the world around us, um, not everybody's going to like it. But there's another thing that will happen as we look different than the world around us. Uh, people will be attracted and drawn to Jesus Christ. And some people will be saved. Not everyone. The Bible doesn't promise that. But some people will be saved. Because when we live according to God's word, what happens is we shine the light of Jesus. It's not our own light. It's it's the light of Jesus. But when we, when we model our lives after him and, and his word, his teachings, uh, then we... We paint a beautiful picture of the gospel. When we don't, we paint a horrible picture of the gospel. When we just live how the world is living and respond the way the world is responding to wickedness around us, then we don't look any different than the world. We might fit in, but with the world around us, uh, they might not look at us like we're strange, but they 
but the, 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 the problem is they won't be led to Jesus. And, and as Christians, we're always representing Jesus. So it's even, it's even worse than that. It's not that we're not leading them to Jesus. We, we might be turning people away from Christ because we don't look anything like him. Um, listen, Jesus, Jesus attracted people to himself um, when he was here on the earth, not because he was physically attractive. Um, the Bible actually tells us there was nothing about his, his appearance that would make you uh, do a double take or stop and look and say, wow, I don't know I want to be around that guy. It wasn't about how he looked on the outside. It was about how he acted and really about how he loved people so well, how he could walk in grace and truth at the same time, how he could, he could speak very clearly um, and, about sin and at the same time love sinners so deeply and so well. And so when we when we look like that, that that's attractive to the world, right? When we look like that, when we love like that, um, the, the, the byproduct will be that people um, who don't know Jesus will be attracted to, to Jesus. Not everyone, not everyone. Some will hate us, but some will, as they see Jesus in us, will be led to salvation. There's nothing better in all of life than that. So I, I, I think we have a, 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 just a great opportunity to shine the light of Christ brightly, you know, if you go into a into a, a, a lit room, a, a room that is, that has the lights turned on, and you you turn a flashlight on, it really doesn't make much difference. It's actually sometimes hard to see the flashlight, but if you go into a dark room and you turn the flashlight on, it it really stands out. Um, it's obvious. It's obvious that there is a light shining. You know, the darker the world is around us brighter we're able to shine as Christians, but only as we live according to the Word of God, only as we live in the same love and grace and truth and mercy and justice and righteousness that characterizes the God that we serve. So I want to close this time with a passage of Scripture, and I'm just going to read it. It comes from Romans. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 12. And as I read it, I just want you to be thinking about um, how do I apply this to my life in the current situation in which, in which I live, in the midst of much wickedness in our world around us. How can I shine brightly by applying the commands of Scripture to my life? God's Word says this, Romans chapter 12, I'm going to start in verse 9 and read through the end of the chapter. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Church family, I just pray that that would characterize how we live in these days. And that as we live that way, we will shine brightly the light and the love 
and the justice and the mercy and the righteousness and the grace and the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who embodied that way of life perfectly. Church family, I love you. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for one another, in prayer for our nation, and uh, in prayer for uh, our church as we uh, begin to uh, take steps towards regathering together. Um, we just want to walk with the Lord and honor the Lord in everything that we do. I love all of you. Blessings in Christ.